Hi friends, the following video is part of my Skillshare course, How to Write an Academic Journal Article. I hope that you find this video useful in isolation, but if you would like to have access to all of the videos listed behind me, the entire Skillshare course, you can click on the link below. This link will also give you one month free premium access to Skillshare. So one of the most important distinctions of academic publishing is the peer review process. So the peer reviewers will have looked at your article. Uh, reviews can take time, so you need to be patient. But what will happen is you will normally get one of four different outcomes. So one is accept, and that's great news. You are going to be published. Sometimes you need to do a little bit of checking and formatting, uh, but that is the best possible outcome. It's normally pretty unusual though to have an article that has no changes, no fixes, no problems whatsoever. The most common is normally one of the next two. So either you get accept with some minor changes and you'll get a list of comments from the reviewer to change, or you might have a major changes, which is also known as a revise and resubmit. There's also a possibility that you just get an outright rejection. So the reject can also happen even before the review. So particularly for uh, the very top tier journals, editor or one of the editor's staff will have a look at your article and if they don't think that it's suitable or that it fits, you'll just get a rejection straight away. And with those, it's not at all a reflection of the quality of your article. It is just that it doesn't fit well with the journal. And so then it's a case of finding another journal and seeing whether they might publish instead. You can also get rejected, however, uh, if you haven't followed instructions. So uh, I know one editor who made the comment that 75% of articles that come in get rejected from his desk because they didn't follow instructions, they're not properly formatted, uh, there's typos in the abstract, all sorts of little sloppy things that just make it not worth the energy of sending to reviewers. So number two and number three are the most common. So either a accept with some minor changes or a major changes. And you shouldn't be despondent about this. Even if you get a reject, you shouldn't be despondent. This is just the opinion of one editor or one editor and a couple of reviewers. Uh, but what I would recommend is to take on board the feedback. So what did the reviewers say? Uh, let's see if we can make some of those changes and fixes and then maybe send to another journal once we've incorporated some of those changes. So if we have a revise and resubmit or we have a minor changes, it's going to be really important that you follow the instructions of your journal that you've submitted. And they can vary a little bit. Some like to get a document with track changes. Uh, some have other ways that they would like you to communicate. So something that I would encourage you to do is have a spreadsheet or a table that has all of the reviewer comments and how you responded to them. Even if you don't explicitly get asked for this, and often you will, but even if you don't, this is really helpful both for you to ensure that you have covered off all of the comments, uh, but also for the editor to see how you have responded. It's okay to disagree with some of the points. There might be things that the reviewers say that you don't agree with, but it's going to be really important that you can provide evidence and justify why you disagree and why you don't want to change that particular aspect of what you have done. It's important to always be polite and respectful. Uh, I mean, that really just anywhere in life, I think that's pretty good advice. But when we're dealing with editors and reviewers, uh, always being polite and respectful, even if you disagree. So disagreeing is OK, but you want to do it in a very polite way. One last comment is that if you get a revise and resubmit or a major changes, uh, this does not mean that if you make all these changes, you will definitely get published. So you do need to look at what is asked of you and decide whether that amount of work is worth it. So it could be that you just have reviewers and they completely disagree with your paradigm or how you've done your analysis. And even if you make all of their changes, you're still not going to get published in this journal. So it could be that you look at those comments and you you can respond, but if it's a really large amount of work, you'll need to weigh up the value of doing that work versus perhaps submitting somewhere else because it's no guarantee that 
what you do will guarantee that you get published. Okay, so that's it for responding to reviewers. In our final section, we will look at what next.